What's up everyone, welcome to this video. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how I created my trance leads for my track Divergent that was recently released on Pure Trance. Um, last week or the week before, we looked at the kick and bass line, so today we're gonna to be looking at the leads after people requesting it. So before we get into the video, if you are looking for tips and tricks like this to help you with your trance productions, then be sure to hit that subscribe and notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. And if you are looking for extra help with your productions, then depending on when you're watching this video, there is a currently a Black Friday sale on now at alanmorrisstudios.com with up to 80% off. It ends on the 30th of November, but there is um, plenty of different production tutorials, courses, uh, sound banks, and everything you can think of to help you with your productions. So be sure to head over to alanmorrisstudios.com if you want to save yourself uh, and get grab yourself a bit of a deal there. So let's jump straight into the video. So with this, or with any track that I'm trying to make, I'm always trying to sort of make sure that I'm creating with purpose. And what I mean when I say that is I'm only doing stuff for a particular reason. So with this track in mind, I wanted to create something that had that bit of an older sound. I didn't want multiple different layers. I just wanted like one thick layer and maybe another one to give it some extra character if needed. So with this main lead layer, I needed it to be thick and to do the job of all the different characteristics of a lead. So how I look at leads is not about how many layers it is like that. It's about the different characteristics of what I need that lead to kind of do. So with this one, I needed to fill out, fill out, fill out, <laughs> fill out the full uh, frequency spectrum, um, but still sort of sound nice and plucky at the start and open up and sound nice and big at the drop. Um, so what I've done here, this is the lead if I let you have a little listen to it. The, the, the main layer there is another one that comes on it comes in in a minute but i'll show you that in a second so let's have a listen to it all together that's the build there then we have the drop a simple main melody um i'll show you the midi for it as well uh, but there's quite a bit of automation going on there so this is the midi for it at the start you'll see here i actually started it uh here and this is the main midi for it now again just two notes playing here and uh, the midi just before it to sort of introduce it i kind of teased it a little bit by chopping it up then it goes into this now there is also a bass line playing underneath it, this, which is playing different notes to harmonize with it. So we have these bottom notes here is the bass line, and this one at the top is the melody. So the main melody, really kind of simple, just two notes, sort of stab style melody. Then we've got the bass notes harmonizing underneath it. Now, to play that without the, the bass, great deal of emotion in there so adding these bass notes in kind of helps harmonize with it and then we have a pad here as well sign has pulled been pulled out here because I dropped to the not the breakdown bass the actual drop bass which is the same pattern again uh only this time I just drop it basically onto another channel when I do the bait uh the breakdown because it's a little bit easier for me to sort of automate and change the volumes and stuff like that so that's the the crux of the midi and the actual patterns of it you'll see here as well um throughout the breakdown so it starts off with just this chopped up version then it goes into this next version it stays on this next version for a good couple of bars then in the drop, it goes back to this again, uh, the, the main one, let's call this the main piece of MIDI. Then at the drop, I drop it back down to the chopped up version again, so you'll be able to hear it just after eight bars. Just 
just to give it um, a little bit of variation there. But the other reason why I did this is I wanted it to sort of pick up some pace in the next eight bars again. So by dropping these down and sort of somewhat slowing it down a little bit uh, in how many notes are being played at each bar, it kind of then made this next part sound like it sped up again. So if I just play it again for you at the drop. So this is the main drop where it drops in and then you'll hear after 16 bars what it kind of does. <laughs> the amount of notes that is that uh, it's dropping down the amount of notes that are playing and then when we get to the next section it kind of gives it that sense of it kind of like picking back up again now there is another pluck that comes in here as well with this to take that harmony up again now this is this one above it here i'll go into the, the sound design of each of these as well in a minute but I uh, just wanted to show you the MIDI parts first. Um, so this then comes in over the top. So it's again, very, very simple note. It's actually playing in the intro as well. Very simple notes there. But again, this is about it harmonizing nicely uh, with the other elements that are around it. So it's almost like splitting it up into different layers. So we've got this note playing, sorry, this lead and intro pluck. My words, say them properly. <laughs> um, playing here over the bass. So this on its own obviously is very simple. Then we have it harmonizing with this bass that's playing a different pattern again. And then we've obviously got this the main lead playing, which is this pattern. And then on top of that again, I have another one here. So this one, which is this, if I play this on its own. So all of these playing together, are harmonizing like this. And then with the pad brought in as well, just to top it off. some acids in there as well it's just sound like this but that's when it's all brought in together so it sounds nice okay so let's talk about the actual lead sound itself uh, and what it's kind of made up of and what I've kind of done because there's quite a bit of automation here you can see so where are we? So it's from Zebra. It's a pluck that I've created for my Zebra bank that I'm currently building at the moment. And um, what you'll see here is one oscillator with four voices on a saw. Uh, and then that goes through to filter one uh, with an envelope uh, mapped. It's got an envelope two mapped to it for, to the cutoff as well. So it sounds nice and plucky when it starts off. Also notice here as well in this oscillator, I've got this sent to M map one, the panning from it. So it's going to go slightly left and right to this just to give it a little bit of movement. Um, oscillator two actually came in afterwards, I if I can remember rightly. Um, the It needed a little bit if I just turn this one off. Did a little bit more low end to the kind of pluck sound. Now I don't have a sub pad in here, which is where I'd usually kind of fill out some of those low end frequencies, but I didn't have one in this track. I was relying on that main lead to kind of fill in that low end as well there. Now I do have a bass that comes in, but it doesn't come in at this part of the track where it's just the lead sound playing. So if I just play it here. <laughs> If I take that oscillator two out, which is a two octaves below, sorry, it's an octave below, but two down from the originally started. Um, I brought the octave below in there to kind of sit underneath. If I play it for you without it, 
Sorry, this is with it. This is it without it. So it just sounded a little bit thin to me in those low, that low mid region. So I brought this in. Now, part of this automation, which you may see, I show you here, is I've actually gone and turned the volume of this oscillator two down as the drop comes in because it's now being replaced with the baseline um, and the kick for example, to fill out that low region. So I now didn't necessarily need this in here, but I did in the breakdown. So it's just a little thing that I've done there. You'll see I've just turned it down um, just as we're coming down to here, just into the drop. Um, and then what else is happening in here? So that's going through to just um, the same filter again, only this time I've brought the filter down, closed it off because it's just oscillator two. What I like about Zebra is you can do an oscillator per voice, uh, an oscillator per filter. If you're using up to four, because different four different filters on this. So just put this through a low pass filter, filtered it down a little bit more on the cutoff. So that sits kind of nice and low. If you just listen to this one on its own. So that's oscillator two sitting below this one. Just fills it out a little bit more there. So that's that. Um now what we have on here is got a bit of a delay designer just for a little bit of movement. If I just go through actually and show you some of the stuff that's on here. Got a little bit of delay designer. The presser is set up there so that it ducks when the kick comes in. That's all it's there for. Now we've got satin two here. Let's go to the main part of the lead so we can hear a bit more. Saturn 2 is just introduced to add um, a little bit of saturation above this uh, 648 hertz part here. Just did a little bit of a boost there and just added a little bit of drive. It just gives it a little bit more presence above those frequencies. Tremolo is there to just give it a little bit of extra movement again to that left and right. Um, you'll see here I've sort of messed around with the offset as well so that it's not just the same amount every time, uh, going left and right. And there is the channel EQ, a little bit of uh, high-end boost there, just give it a little bit of high-end brightness. And I've rolled off a bit of the low. The low at the start is still there. The majority of it is. It doesn't need to be taken out at this point. As we get towards the drop, I start to cut off a little bit more according to what is in that track. So every time I do leads, these are always done completely different and approached completely different according to what is in that track at that time. So don't just look at these and think, oh, cut at that point. That will always change according to what's in there. Uh, and it's the same with any lead. Uh, I never have a set cut off point or anything like that. Um, it's always according to what's in the track. So then we have the tube EQ here, which is again, just giving me a little bit of a boost here at uh, 12 kilohertz. I quite like this. It just allows you to somewhat boost a little bit more sometimes without it getting sound a little bit harsh when you do it. So if I just move them out of the way. I do it at the drop, for example, you hear a little bit better. So just a little bit more presence there and a little bit of drive. Uh, then what we've got here, just a gain control. It's just to change the volume. Arts Acoustic for reverb. So decent length tail. I've um, pulled down the lower frequencies in the reverb tail here, you can see, and just allowed the bright end to sort of shine through more with this. Um, what else have we got here? Maggie Q4. <laughs> so this is something that I don't ever really use, but I got sucked into a sale, didn't I? And I thought I'd give it a little try. So it actually sounds okay. I get a little bit of a presence boost here at that 2.5 kilohertz. Um, but you do not need this again. Sometimes what will happen, you'll notice here, I've got like three different sections kind of gone because I'm always constantly trying to test which the best results for me. So I'll sometimes try different things, find out which one works best, do a bit of A, B, and then I'll kind of remove them. And I left this one on here. I thought it'd just give it a little bit higher in brightness there, boosting at the 2.5 kilohertz, and also a bit on the air band there. Again, 
nothing against this plugin whatsoever. I just, I quite often don't feel like it's always needed uh, for that sort of high end brightness. Probably could have just tackled it another way, but I left it on there at this point. Um, and then again, not sure why this EQ is on here. It might have been another automation thing that I was using it for. Um, okay, so the next layer. Oh, and then back to the automation. So you'll see here, if I just go through some of these, um, I've done little bits of delay uh, automation. You'll see here just to give it a bit of movement. I've also, so there's the volume. What else have we got in here? We've got low cut, high cut. They're just pretty standard stuff. The release for the lead sound you'll hear. Come up to the build up, I've kind of made a bigger release on there. Um, what else have we got? We have the attack time. So the attack time changes as well on the plucks, right? So just to kind of change it and give it a bit of variation as it's kind of going through and playing. Uh, and I brought it back down again for the drop. But if you listen to it, Gives it this nice sort of smeary sound when you've got a combination of the attack and the release going up at the same time. It's almost turning it from a lead into a pad to help with the build up. Then, um, what else? I think that was it for the automation on this. Uh, the delay cut off as well. So you see here, just again, doing a bit of manual sort of automation to just sounds a little bit more natural than drawing it in every time and constantly kind of going up and down just to kind of give it that bit of movement. Um, okay, so the next layer was uh, a very sort of phased sort of sound, and you'll notice here, so it's the same pluck that I played uh, here, I think, very similar, yeah, same sort of pluck, only this time I wanted to add a bit of a phaser to it, Now I probably would have tried it on the original sound, giving you too much phaser for what I wanted, so what I've done here is I've low cut a lot of the low end out because I didn't want that low end phasing, um, or having a phaser on it, and It's just basically giving it that little bit of extra kind of like movement to the sound that I wanted, but it was far too much on the main lead. But the other reason why I've done this as well is I build it up. So in the build ups, so I you come here, you'll hear really ramp it up there, and it just kind of helps with that build up as well. Not there, here. This kind of helps with that build up there um, amongst also the attack time uh, being changed and the release time as well. It's not a huge big layer, to be honest with you. It's like probably it's a slight change that I wanted there. You probably wouldn't even maybe need it. I noticed it and I liked it. <laughs> and that's it for those leads. It's one big fat lead layer here and then another sort of like decorative phaser style lead on top of it. Uh, and then the rest of it is kind of new elements kind of coming in. Uh, the counter pluck again, let's show you this as well. It's again, just another one of my plucks, I think. Um, no, it wasn't. It's like a... You sort of sound, not quite sure where I got that kind of from or if I created it myself, I can't remember. Um, but the main intro pluck, sorry, was... my plucks it's the same pluck right probably got some little tweaks in there but yeah I hopefully this is giving you a bit of an insight into how this track was made was really kind of going for that older sort of sound with this around that two, 2000 sort of era um so i wanted to kind of keep down that line of when creating this track uh without adding in heaps of layers and there's nothing wrong with adding in layers and whatnot plenty of tutorials i've got one on the website there as well if you want to check that out on how i would do more layers in a track but for this track and what i was trying to do with this didn't need it so 
I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope it's been a bit of a good insight for you and you learned something from it. Uh, if you haven't yet done so, be sure to hit that subscribe and notification bell. And again, if you haven't been over to AIM Studios and you are looking for help with your productions, then there is now up to 80% off. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.